Welcome back, everyone. This is Jaronitis bringing you Feed the Beast 1710. Today, we are starting on episode 21, and I am here in the nether. Uh, last episode, I talked about uh, upgrading the Ender Sword that we are using to kill the stuff downstairs, and I did. Um, the other thing I happened to notice, uh, I don't know if you guys are paying attention close enough, but if you, those of you, who, bleh, but for those of you who were, you might have noticed that I was having trouble getting my skulls into my, uh, my vat here. They weren't going there for some reason. Um, that being said, uh, I went ahead and changed a couple of things. Um, for some reason they were always going upstairs, even though I told them specifically not to. Uh, so I took the barrel out from here, I put it downstairs at the vat itself, and I went ahead and changing, oh, I'm going ahead and changing this now. Whoops, I forgot I needed the skull. I just put them all in the barrel. Come here. Alright, so anyway, I am applying a filter to this. Just your normal basic filter. We're changing it to blacklist, and we're blacklisting skulls. Okay, so no skulls are allowed to go into the trash can. And put this facade back. All right. So since no skulls are allowed to go in there, and that means that the skulls are either going to accumulate here, or they're going to go into this barrel. Um, it's interesting. I, I'm wondering if for some reason the priority system doesn't work uh, when the uh, when no one's here, if there's some sort of oddity there. But that's okay. I'm not really going to worry about that too much. Uh, that should take care of it. Either, you know, if I happen to run out, whenever I come to the nether, it'll automatically go ahead and take care of it. Um, this is already up to 108 buckets of nutrient distillation. This is actually going surprisingly well. Uh, and I went ahead and upgraded the Ender into a Empowered 4. 95% damage absorbed by power, so this thing will probably last for a very, very long time now. Uh, one thing I did notice that when we upgraded to 1.03, we can now have conduit facades that are made of quite clear glass. Oh, but they don't connect the textures. Well, no, they connect the textures to each other but not to the stuff that's already here. Oh. Well, if I built the entire thing out of quite clear glass, then it would all look normal, but yeah, no. Oh, well, it would have been cool. It would have been very surprising if they had managed to do that. It would have been kind of kind of interesting. Um, the only other thing I was thinking, I was thinking that there was a note that if you placed a conduit facade with no paint on it, that it would be clear no okay it's not there okay well whichever that's still cool so now we should have that taken care of and this should be uh, which by the way I also configured this to pull from the side where the skeleton skulls are as well so we are making nutrient distillation at an alarmingly fast rate that is excellent and this barrel is also now full of experience and we've gained another 14 levels on killer Joe I'm beginning to think that we're just never gonna run out of experience which is fine by me uh, but we will have to get some better storage. Well, I mean, I guess technically Killer Joe can hold it. Eh, we'll think about that some other time. So I just wanted to show you the, the little bit of changes here and uh, and to show you that we have more nutrient distillation. I think I might actually take this with me. I hadn't looked to see how much nutrient distillation we've actually used upstairs. Uh, or not upstairs, but back at the home base. So we'll check into that. I'll meet you back over there back in the overworld and it turns out we have used actually very very little of this nutrient distillation this might actually be an amazingly good way to uh, to generate power for everything because um, we only had I don't know was it 19 buckets something like that uh, we have another hundred and eleven buckets here uh, just for fun we're gonna take this off of here we're gonna put this drum on here. Uh, I think it will pull directly from that drum. We'll find out. But for now, let's empty this into that drum. And of course, you empty it into the drum just by right-clicking on it, changing it from blue to orange. This changing it to output. And now we have uh, 128 buckets of nutrient distillation. We're currently generating nothing because we have no need. 
Uh, so uh, let's see what happens when these trees harvest. Here we go. And we're dropping, and there we go. Once it drops about a quarter of the way down, uh, more like 20%, um, once it drops down about 20%, it will then kick back on and start generating again. So, yeah, that's working rather nicely. So, uh, as you can see, I changed things up a little bit. Um, we were harvesting trees at an alarming rate. Uh, we were actually going to wind up filling up the oak, you know, the oak tree barrel long before we did anything else. Um, probably not a big deal. I might wind up just go ahead and going ahead and putting a trash can uh, on the end of this. Uh, that way, anything that uh, you know, once a barrel gets full, it winds up in the trash can. Uh, that way we can just uh, continue to run this. Uh, it's the minus side of doing trees along with the other crops, because the trees are going to produce more stuff than the other crops are anyway. So, But uh, speaking of that, we're going to go ahead and see what we can do to increase the speed that we are growing our crops. Okay, There are several ways to do this, and we're going to examine uh, probably three of them. We might even, I'll, I'll talk about a couple others, but we're going to actually uh, show you three of them. Uh, the first one is going to be the watering can. Okay, the watering can is from Extra Utilities. Uh, the watering can, as it says, plants and crops require lots of love and attention, but did you know that the mere act of standing there sprinkling them with water is enough to inspire them to grow at a much faster rate? Okay, you craft the watering can and you fill it with water, and it's a basically early game alternative to bone meal. And it gets you a lot of food. It's originally intended to make so you would not uh, starve to death uh, early on. Okay. Uh, basically, it's you know. Eh. I, I spawned next to a village. If I hadn't spawned next to a village, I would have. What is wrong with me? What is on my chest? Oh, is that the pendant? Oh, okay, yeah. They're, okay, well, now they, they've made it so that you can uh, see that I'm wearing a pendant. It actually shows up on my, my character. I've forgotten about that. It was the, That was in the uh, update for, for 1.03 as well. So, yeah, I was just looking at it. I was like, what in the world? Uh, so, anyway, what was I saying? All uh, right, having spawned next to a village, I had a lot of early game food. Uh, therefore, I didn't need the watering can. Uh, but it really is something that I should have showed you guys early on. And now, well, I guess I'm just doing it because I, I really feel that I need to, even though I didn't, even though I should have. Everybody catch that? Good. Can someone explain it to me now? All right. So anyway, um, originally the watering can was made with the smooth stone. Uh, now this should be, yeah, peaceful mode only. Uh, you can't craft this unless you are in peaceful mode. Uh, in this case, originally it was made with smooth stone, but now they've changed it to iron, which actually makes a bit more sense considering, you know, watering can, iron, and all that stuff. So now that we have, nah, it's nighttime. All right, so now that we have the watering can, we can go back outside. And now you'll notice that it says that the watering can is empty. Uh, Right-clicking on any water source block will work, and it will fill it up. Uh, technically, they can empty out, although I actually have never seen it happen. So if we right-click, you will see this cool little water sprinkling effect, and you can see that the crops are growing much faster. Uh, now, with the normal rotting can, basically it waters a nine-block area, the block you were pointing at, and the eight blocks surrounding it. And as you can see, things are growing a bit faster. Okay, so in the early game, like I said, this is important for, so that you don't starve to death, and I didn't have to do it myself. Now, the, you know, this is good if you're sitting, if you're starving and you need food right away. You know, this is a good way to do it. You stand here, and uh, and this works rather effectively. Okay, um, why isn't it replanting? It's probably just taking a second to replant, waiting for it to go through its cycle. So yeah, this is a really good way to, to, without any kind of, you know, I mean, it costs you four iron, a bowl, and a piece of bone meal. I mean, this is really easy, can be done without, you know, with minimal effort, but you do have to stand here. And that's just not as much fun. Um, so that's one way. We're going to go put this in the equipment area because we're not really going to use this very much. Uh, later on, we will use something similar, 
but uh, that's going to be a whole nother time. Okay, another thing that we can also work with, since we've been playing with Blood Magic, is the Sigil of the Green Grove. Okay, the Sigil of the Green Grove is, what was that? Apprentice, Transcendent. Interesting, there's a new Blood Orb. I've never know, never knew what that one was before. Alrighty, that's fine too. Alright, so anyway, uh, we're going to need four saplings, three pieces of sugar cane, a uh, reinforced slate, and a orb. So, um, I'm not going to find the saplings in here. They're all out here now. So, four saplings, three pieces of sugar cane, which should be in the growing stuff. And some stuff from the blood magic area. Yoink. All right, so I really need to switch these to remember which one's input, which one's output. One needs to be, okay, that's input. All right, we're up to 33 slates, by the way, which is really cool considering. Uh, let's see, let's put this in here. And this is going to start putting uh, life essence into my network. Uh, we want to have that in my network so that we can use the sigil of the green grove that we are now making. And we should be able to go ahead and do that. And there we go. Sigil of the Green Grove. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's grab my divination sigil and see how much we have. All right. We have 19,432. That should be more than enough for the demonstrating. Is there some in there or is there not some in there? Okay. I think that's just a visual glitch. All right, so anyway, we'll go ahead and store that back here. Where's my normal blood orb? Ah, there it is. And the sacrificial... Oh, they switched to the orb instead of the dagger. Hmm, interesting. Another little change. Either way, uh, so now that we have that, we can get on out of here. And by the way, I did install a gold chest here for when I am using the dagger of sacrifice to kill the monsters that fall down. Um, I am, you know, anything I really don't care for will go in here, and I'm just storing the other stuff up here for now. Uh, I'll decide what I'm going to do with it in mass later. Uh, I have a couple ideas, but again, we'll we'll deal with that when we come back to this. All right, as with anything that you make in Blood Magic, as you can see, it says current owner and nothing. Uh, you want to right-click it to bind it to your soul network and start using uh, the, soul, the life essence from your own soul network. Uh, now, keep in mind, when you right-click it, not only is it going to bind it to your soul network, but it's going to start glowing. Okay, it is glowing because you have activated it and it is now using life essence from your soul network. So unless you want to be using it, make sure you right click it again. Uh, the first right click does bind it to you, but it does always turn as it does turn it on as well. So keep that in mind and don't wind up getting yourself in trouble by uh, by using it without knowing that you are. Okay, now then, since we now have this, what this is going to do uh, when you right click the any plant with it. It gives it a bone meal effect, essentially the same thing as right clicking with a piece of bone meal. Okay. Uh, now, when you do that, and I knew I should have kept my divination sigil out, the divination sigil shows that we have 18732. When we right click once, we now have 18582. Uh, doing math on camera again, 150, if I'm not mistaken. So it costs 150 per right click with the green, sigil of the green grove. On the other side of things, if you right click it to where it's glowing, now it is turned on and anything within a certain distance around you, I believe it's about four blocks, might be wrong on that, uh, not sure exactly, but I believe it's about four blocks, will start getting uh, quickly grown. And as you can see, Things are starting to grow fast around me. What? What is that in the left side of the screen? That's a new. Uh, anyway, so as you're standing here, uh, you'll notice that we just went right there from 17.832 to 17.682. It is using roughly uh, between two and 300 uh, per time it cycles through. So 17.232. And then next time it ticks, it's going to put us down to, I believe, uh, it should come down to 16,932. Okay, it only took 200, 250 that time. Hmm. It seems to be fluctuating ever so slightly, but that's okay too. Uh, so this is another way that just by standing here, you can actually have this work and things will grow faster. But yet again, you have to stand here. And well, 
it, it works very effectively, but I don't want to stand here. Uh, this will be very handy to have. We will be using it in the future. But for now, we want to go another step further. And let me put this portable tank up as well. We want to do something that we don't have to stand here and babysit. Okay. So what we want to do is we're going to go back to Batania. All right. So in Batania, there are a couple things that we're going to need. I'm going to need my Lexica Batania for starts. We are going to be making a rune of the spring. And I have this all prepared already because preparation. All right. In Batania, you need the rune of the... No, that's rune of greed. We're going to need a rune of water. Just one, please. A rune of fire. And then we're going to need a piece of wheat and three oak saplings. Well, actually, technically speaking, it could be any saplings. So let's go into the growing stuff and just grab three random saplings. And there's three birch saplings. That'll work. And in the food section, I still have some wheat. So we should be able to go ahead and let's see. Drop, 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 drop. And then we're going to need the wand of the forest. And we should be able to go ahead and tell it to make awesome. Now, we're going to be making this for the express purpose of making plants grow faster. And you would think that with the name like the Rune of the Spring, that's exactly what it would do. But the Rune itself doesn't actually do anything. Uh, as with most things with Batania, we're going to be using the Rune of the Spring to make a flower. All right, the flower we're going to be making is called the Agricarnation. The Agricarnation is going to make things grow faster. So the Agricarnation required the Rune of the Spring. We're going to need some redstone root. We're going to need three lime, one green, one yellow, and one red petal. So let's see. One, two, three lime, red, yellow, and orange. No, no orange. Three lime, green, yellow, red. Three lime, green, yellow, red, and a piece of redstone root, which I did not make any extra of last time, but that's okay. We just need a piece of redstone and a piece of tall grass. Tall grass, there it is. And we can go ahead and combine them in our personal crafting menu. Uh, now, as we've seen before, a couple of these will have to be mystic. Uh, the red will have to be a mana petal. The green will have to be a mana petal. And one of the limes will have to be a mana petal. So let's see. One lime, the green, and the red. All right, so now that we have that, we can toss this all in the petal apothecary. Should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the rune. And then we will need a good old normal seed, which are now stored outside. And we should be able to drop one of these in there, and that should get us our agricarnation. Sweet. One agricarnation. And let's fill this back up while I have a brain and while I'm thinking about it. Yay. Okay. So now that we have the agricarnation, we have to discover the uses of the agricarnation. Well, as I said before, it helps plants grow faster. So let's go ahead and look in here. The slow growth of crops is always a problem to feed the masses. The agricarnation is a flower that turns manna into a type of natural fertilizer, causing nearby plant life to grow at a faster rate. Okay. That being said, we are going to need manna to get this to function. Okay. So we're going to need a piece of dirt because I've already planned where I'm going to put this. And we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a diluted mana pool. Okay, I can use a full-size mana pool, but I really don't want to put that much mana out here to this thing. I would rather uh, just have it be diluted. Okay, so what we're going to do, because the diluted mana pool works the same as a normal mana pool, it just doesn't hold quite as much stuff. Okay, so we can go ahead and cover the planter because we don't actually need it to be there. And then we can go ahead and stop that. Plant the agricarnation here. I hope the harvester doesn't harvest the agricarnation. That would be hilarious if it did. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and put the diluted mana pool here next to it. Okay, so now we need to put some mana in the diluted mana pool. Now, I can do this by just dropping my band of mana on it, and that actually would work rather well. 
But, uh, you know, I don't want to have to continuously take my band of mana on and off. So we're going to go ahead and get this put out here uh, in a semi-automated way. Let me sleep through the night real quick, and we'll get to doing this. All right, so as you know, the mana uh, spreader basically fires a beam of mana, line of sight, and towards something that will store mana. So with that mana pool right there... We should be able to follow this line of sight to one block to the right of the door. And what do you know, we happen to have a place right here where this is going to work. Okay, now it's showing that it is hitting this wall and stopping. Okay, because mana bursts will not fly through walls. Well, they won't yet. We're going to fix that. So to do that, what we're going to wind up needing is a blank mana lens. And we are also going to be making, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but let's go through here real quick. Mana manipulation, mana lenses. There we go, the phantom lens. The phantom lens is going to allow us to shoot mana beams through solid objects. Okay, we're going to need an obtruse platform, an abstruse, abstruse platform, yeah, sure of that. All right, we're going to need two pieces of living wood. We're going to need a mana pearl. Oh, I hope I went and got some mana pearls. We're going to need framed living wood and pattern framed living wood. The framed living wood is simply four living wood planks, and the framed uh, pattern framed living wood is going to be four planks on the outside edges. Um, so let's see. Did I get some? Yes, I did. Okay, good. So now that we have this together, we're going to need eight planks should be enough. That will get us the framed living wood, and we should be able to put this together here to get the pattern framed living wood. Uh, now I just need to make sure I actually have an ender pearl. Please tell me I have an ender pearl. Oh, good, I have five. Good. So one thing I did not check to make sure I actually had some of before I started doing this. All right, let's see. Drop that. Thank you for the mana pearl. All right, so we should be able to put this here. Living wood here and here that like that and bingo we now have two abstruse platforms so we take the basic mana lens and we put it in there with that and now we have the mana lens phantom all right cool so now if we right click this on the front of this we should then be able to see that it is going through now the problem we have here is as you can see right here see this little sprite right there well, it's not really a sprite, but it's little, this little flicker right here. At the point that this flicker is, basically the way this is set up, it is showing me that once the mana burst reaches this point, it starts losing mana uh, as it goes through here. Now, it's still capable of reaching, but it's losing quite a bit of mana. Actually, it might be losing more than it has uh, to reach here. So we can actually shoot the mana lens, uh, the mana beam this far, but by the time it actually gets over there, there's really nothing left of it to use. So what we need to do now is extend the reach of this so that we can then get further. Um, let's see. The mana lens that's going to allow that to happen. I can't remember the name of it either. Uh, velocity is going to make it go further. No, no, not further. Velocity is increase the speed that it travels. Uh, but it starts to lose its mana a lot faster, okay, so we don't want that. Uh, the potency will double the amount of mana burst, however the beam becomes slower and after it starts to lose mana it does it at a faster rate. Okay, so that's still not going to do any good either. Uh, resistance lens, time can go without starting to lose mana, there it is, but it makes it a bit slower. Oh, I don't care how slow it is, as long as it can go further without losing mana. So. To do this, we're going to need a Rune of Earth and a Nether Mana Lens. I hope I have a Rune of Earth handy. If not, we can make one. Um, there we go. Rune of Earth. Handy. All right. Uh, and the Mana Lens is going to require, as I remember, four pieces of uh, Mana Steel and a Glass Pane. So... No, not the Glass Pane. That. All right. So now we should be able to... Let's drop all this extra living wood off. We should be able to go ahead and make ourselves the basic mana lens. And then we should be able to upgrade it with the Rune of Earth to the mana lens of resistance. Now, with the mana lens of resistance, we're going to go ahead and combine these into a compound mana lens. And 
if I did this right, which I did not test this, but based on the way it shows it, this should work. We should have a mana lens that will shoot through blocks and still make it far enough to not lose all of its power going over there. So let's take a look and see. Did it double far enough? Yes, it did. Now, as you can see, the little uh, floaty spark thing is no longer there. And we are now shooting mana all the way over to the other side. Now, as we can see, I keep doing that. Anyway, uh, as you can see here, the mana finally is starting to build up just a little bit in here. But as you can see, the Iger Carnation is now giving off these little particle effects. And as you can see around the area, the you can see a bone meal type effect being put onto the plants. So it is using the mana that is being spread over here to gradually make things grow faster. And on the plus side, I can walk away from this and it will do it all by itself. No fuss, no muss. There we go. So we now have mana that can shoot through not only the wall, but also through the barrel here and get stored over here. Now, like I said, we only want to store just a little bit of mana here because we don't really want to empty out an entire pool over here. It's just not necessary. Uh, as you can see, we are getting more mana than we are using, and we actually aren't really going to be using a whole lot out of here. Actually, with that going there, when it takes one from there, it'll take one from here. So yes, yeah, one mana burst uh, every so often, and we are making mana significantly faster than that. Or we would if I had some coal in there. Be nice if I actually had some coal in there, wouldn't it? Here, make more mana. All right, cool. So now we have automated accelerated growth. And we should start to see that in the fact that we actually now have some wheat, carrots, and potatoes. Um, I went ahead and, by the way, uh, last episode when I showed you guys the planter, I was trying to figure out why it was planting. There it goes again. I was trying to remember uh, why it was planting trees everywhere. Uh, when you look at the planter, uh, any areas that aren't specified are automatically planted uh, with what is already there. So when you look at the planter, actually, let's just pull this up so you guys can see. I can place it back here in just a second. Uh, when you look at the planter, okay, these uh, nine squares tell you how you can uh, set things. Okay, if you put, like I put the, the saplings in the red square and then it planted the saplings all over everywhere. Okay. I told it it can plant saplings, and I told it the red square is where you can plant saplings, but I didn't say it couldn't plant them in the other squares, okay? So it automatically distributed them amongst all the other things because I didn't say it couldn't, okay? So this is, you know, it's, it's, it's because I didn't say that. Now, since I've now specified something in every slot, it will only plant it in the appropriate areas, okay? That's why I actually wound up putting seeds down the center here. Uh, that way it will go ahead and be planting seeds there and not leave it open. Now, if you do leave it open, the one it will choose will always be what is ever in the first slot right here. That's why it did the trees. Now, if I were to leave these open and put the seeds here instead of the saplings, it would put, plant the seeds here instead. So I don't have to specify this, but I can and I am. Okay, so all I'd have to do is swap the positions of these two and it would go just the same. All right. So that's why I was trying to figure that out last episode, and that is why I knew the answer. I just didn't think of it at the time. So now we have fully automated farm. We have trees. We've got wheat. We've got potatoes. We've got carrots. There's really not a whole lot else to plant here. I could plant some nether wart here and have it automatically harvesting nether wart. And, you know, I might actually do that. Um, I could make it so that nether wart grown here could be harvested here and deposited in the nether. Uh, we might do that. I'll have to get into that in another episode. But unfortunately for now, we've reached the wrapping up point. So until next time, this is Jaronitis signing off on episode 21 of my Let's Play series. Like me if you like me. Subscribe if you want to see what I get into next. And as always, help spread the gaming.